everybody. So science fiction is often seen as the herald of the future, predicting the shape of invention and innovation to come. Star Trek is perhaps one of the most famous of these, and is supposed to be responsible for things like the flip communicator, if you think about the Nokia phone, tricorders, hypo sprays, and replicators when you think of 3D printing. But one thing I thought would be a long way coming is the holographic camera. The holographic camera plays a big role in Star Trek, courtesy of the holodecks, and I thought it would be a very long time before we saw something like that. And then Revo Point sent me this. It's their latest 3D scanner. We've done a review on Inspar before, and this is the Miracle, and it's perhaps the closest I've ever seen to a holographic camera. It captures 3D images that you can then 3D print from. Now, I'm not a great one for waxing lyrically about any particular technology. I just use it as a tool. But this one, it's perhaps the sexiest thing I've ever come across. I mean, a holographic camera from Star Trek. What, what more could you want as a bona fide nerd? It's really comfortable to handle. And we're going to use it in the spirit that I think it's meant because we're going to capture something that normally would be quite fleeting and is out there in the real world. And this is it. It's a little piece of sculpture. There's a, a little sculpture walk where I live and the artists create these things, leave them on the walk, and the idea is they just rot away with time. And you'll find similar things actually in uh, Grisdale Forest. There's another park here in Kent. And if you go to North Italy in Lido di Jesolo, you'll find rocks on the sea that are carved. So these are here, meant to be enjoyed, meant to fade away, and now, we can capture them. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this miracle and capture this in 3D. Of course, you sit it on its tripod if you want to, but I quite like that hand scanning bit. Now, one of the cute things is that flips up. And so you can see what you're doing if you're pointing it at yourself, which is pretty cool. And when you're scanning, what I discovered was um, it can find its own place. So if you get it out, it'll go red. If you move it till it goes green and hold it a little bit, it'll find its place and continue with the scan. Equally, you can press pause and adjust yourself. So if you're in an awkward position, you press the pause button, get yourself in a good position, press carry on scanning, it'll find its place and continue the scan. I thought it was very cool. It's got a button on the top here like an ordinary camera and you can do single shots as you go around it, you can take a shot. You do have to remember to overlap each one. I think it's about 60% overlap as you take those shots around and it will build the model from single shots which is again really cool if you're finding holding it and it's all wobbling a bit too much for you then just take a single shot like you do in a camera and, and this is the thing I like about it I like it that everything is integrated in here now it will do near or far near is for um, small objects and far is for larger objects and there's a little switch button on the actual screen itself which we'll go through in a bit but you just press the screen it will go near or far which is large or small it has a, a kind of a green indicator bar at the top and as you get it in a good position that bar will move telling you that you've got a good or excellent reading and the image you're trying to scan will also go green again telling you you've got an excellent record of it. During your scan you can actually play with it by stretching it or pinching it or rotating around it to see how much you've actually scanned and what your cloud is looking like. To turn this thing in, all we have to do is press and hold that button at the side, give it a second, and the Revo point will start up and the start screen will start up. Now, apparently it'll scan for about two hours. And if you charge it with its charger, it's about, uh, I think, 30 minutes until it's 85% charged. So, pretty handy. So when you finish your scanning, it'll save it as a project, actually as a project file. And to get to it, you press that there. Then it will list the projects and we can tap on the project that we're interested in and it will pull that project file up, which is the cloud point that you just captured. This is actually one of the things that I think is the genius of this device. It's sort of tied together a tablet, a larger battery and the scanner all in one, meaning you can do everything all in one and the edit here is available 
all in one. So if you don't want to do anything, then you can use the presets by using the one tap edit right there. Or you can step down through the levels and do your own editing and change those presets so that it can be whatever you want it to be. And you can do what you'd expect to be able to do. You can isolate things that are floating off. You can um, fill in holes, all that sort of stuff. And you go down one step at a time making those adaptations until you've done your actual edit. So say if you don't want to do that, then you can just one tap edit. You can also have a look at the raw data if you want, and this is the original scan. The fidelity of the scan is just awesome. The next thing you're gonna to want to do, of course, is get it into your computer, and you can do that by either Wi-Fi or USB-C, and I've opened Revo Scan 5.3.1, and there's the scan that we've just taken. The fidelity is incredible. If you zoom down in this, you'll be able to see some amazing detail. Like there's the moss that was growing and you can see that the wood grain is there. So it's a pretty good scan for what we took and I'm quite pleased with it. Now to get it out, we need to export it. And we can export it in any of the modes, but there is a sort of restriction. So if you do um, the textured mode, then you can only get PLY or OBJ, which, you know, I mean, it's no real restriction, but there is a restriction on it. So if you change that, and we look at meshed mode, then this time when we export it, we can export it as a PLY OBJ and this time STL file. Now I'm a fan of STL, so let's export it in STL. When we've exported it in STL, we can import it. And here I'm using Anagul Cure it with the uh, Max uh, 4. And you can see that it's far too big. But if we actually um, go to the scaling, lock the scaling and reduce that scaling, then it'll fit really nicely on any Elegoo format and we've got a real nice 3D model that we can print out. So let's get that on print. And there it is side by side. Now the scanner did print it full scale. And even though I've got the Elegoo Max, there was no way I was printing that full scale. So I did it at that scale. One of the really cool things actually is that some anonymous artist has put this here. I mean, there's no plaque, no recognition. They've just put it there for us to enjoy. And of course I've come along and scanned it. Because <laughs> I couldn't resist doing this. There's me, look at that. So let's import it into uh, Revo Scan again and have a better look at it. And you can see that the quality of the scan, it's amazing. If we zoom down on it, then you can see every hair. That's really, really brilliant. Okay, let's export it as an STL. I want to fool around with this a little bit. And then to do that, I'm going to put it into Tinkercad. But there's a problem with Tinkercad. Tinkercad can only take 25 megabytes and uh, I think it's 300,000 triangles. But once we've got our STL, we can go here, which is called Mess Simplification. If you type that in Google, it'll send you straight there. You can select the file that you want and we're going to get that scan that I just did of me and click on it. What it'll do is simplify the mesh. Now, as we first do it, we can have a look and see that it's got too many triangles on it for a Tinkercad. We want to reduce that, although it is 25 megabytes. And that slider allows you to reduce it. And if we reduce that by half to 25% instead of 50%, and then we click on it, it will re-render it. And this time you'll see that the triangle number, the mesh triangle number, has dropped below the 300,000. And the other thing that's happened is that there's less memory. So now we can load it into Tinkercad and we can look around. I've put that plinth on it, joined it up, cleaned up the edges so it looks more, a bit more like a statuette. And now we can get that printing. Put that into Elegoo Cura, make sure the settings are good. So I've got um, 
raft adhesion, I've got support, I'm doing it at uh, 250 millimeters per second. That all looks good to me and we can slice it. <laughs> there it is, a bust of me. Actually, it's pretty impressive. I mean, it's captured the folds of the cloth and all that sort of stuff. I'm going to put it on the thingiverse. It's perhaps a little self-indulgent and arrogant of me, but if you want to print it off to judge the quality of the actual scanner, you can do. And this thing I'm calling the Bishopston Man of the Woods, and I'm going to do exactly the same. That'll be on Thingiverse as well, so you can have a look at the models. I'll print them off if you want to, to gauge it. Now, the thing is uh, a Kickstarter campaign, so it's only available via Kickstarter, and I've put a link to that in the description below. And of course, it doesn't come as just the camera in a bag. They send you a whole host of accessories as well. So there's a charger, there's a, another little bust, which I must admit was the inspiration. There's a turntable for small objects. It's got a tripod to be able to stand it on. Cute carry handle, already used that. Number of adapters so you can plug it in anywhere. USB-C cable, charging cable, and a HDMI cable. And of course, some of their markers and marker mats for you to lay everything out, including something they call magic mat. Big piece of black plastic with some dots on it. Uh, this is a, a quad camera, which is what enables that near or far. The near is for small objects, rings, fossils, that kind of thing. The far is for um, people and large objects. It's actually how I shot this. So it's quite versatile. It weighs about 750 grams, so it is the lightest scanner around there. Now, I don't really think it should be called a scanner, to be honest, because to my mind, it's an all-in-one 3D camera. I mean, I held this by hand, had no trouble at all getting really good scans. Of course, if I stabilized it, then perhaps it would get better quality, but I still had no problem at all getting pretty good quality by shaking it around in my hand as I was busy scanning these bits and pieces that I went out to scan. So I found it actually astonishingly useful. And as I say, whoever came up with this idea of unifying those, I think it was a work of genius because um, on the the other scanner that I used, uh, finding something to scan onto was a, a bit of a pain. I mean, not much, but a bit, and then you had to put all those parts together. This one, it's a single unit you're just going to grab and use, and I really liked that as an idea. Uh, and I like the idea of it being a 3D camera as opposed to a 3D scanner, because it is something that I think you can pick up and use. And when it comes to tools, that's exactly what I think about them. I think you should just be able to pick up and use them, stab at them a couple of times and get them to do the job that you want. So the learning curve on this, it wasn't great at all, actually. It didn't take me very long to pick that up. No doubt you get more skilled with it like anything as you use it, but to start using it, you want it easy to use. Later, as you learn about it, you can dig into it and get some better and better results for sure. But just starting to use it, I think the usability from the box is one of those key issues. And I had no problems at all with that. <laughs> really very impressed with it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you liked the look of this. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.